In this video, I'll give you 10 pro tips that will maximize the efficiency of your Blender studies. Let's go. Hi guys, are you here from Blender Bros and let's get started. Tip number one, get familiar with the user interface. Take some time to explore the Blender interface and become familiar with its layout and different tools. Remember that we all work in different areas. Some of us are doing sculpting, others are doing hard surface, some is doing texturing. So there are different user interfaces for different things. You don't need to know everything. You just need to know what's essential for your workflow. So when you're starting with Blender, instead of you know trying to learn everything, don't. Just focus on the tools you need. Once you master the area you know around your subject, then you can kind of start expanding because you're gonna feel more comfortable right otherwise you're gonna get frustrated so don't do it tip number two start with simple projects don't try to tackle two complex ideas as your first attempt start with something simple like modeling a basic object or creating a simple animation if you're into animation right the point is that i know you're tempted to do something awesome right but you know to do something awesome and complex you need to know a lot of tools and also how these tools are working together because it's not just about learning tools okay it's about learning the workflow and the workflow is something that it's based on using tools in a certain sequence you don't know that because you just started so what you need to do is you need to understand how things work in blender what is really important so for instance if you're working with bullions you will know that you need to take care of the shading problems and you will start learning and appreciating the power of weighted normal modifier and you will also understand that placing at the bottom of the stack of modifiers it's essential for you know achieving successful shading then again when you're working with bevels you will understand very quickly that you need to be very careful regarding the bevel size because if you overshoot the bevel you will cause artifacts and problems on your mesh Tip number three, follow online tutorials. You know, there are many online tutorials and video courses available that can help you to learn the basics of Blender. And they can be a great resource for getting started. There's nothing worse than trying to puzzle information together because it will just take you a lot of time. There were not many really good essential courses at the time when I started in Blender. And, you know, I wanted to get into add-on workflow. So there weren't any courses on add-on workflow. So I follow Master Z on videos. They were not easy to follow because, you know, he is not really catering to beginners so it took me really a lot of time to learn blender but at the same time learn hard ups box cutter and you know other add-ons because i started blender with few add-ons okay i just made it more difficult for myself but i knew what i wanted okay i knew what i wanted and i couldn't find it so now you are really lucky i mean really lucky because we have not just a course for you but a free course and it's called jumpstart hard surface in blender it's free and it's fantastic it will teach you everything from scratch including the internet interface and also you know the basics of modeling but also basics of texturing rendering and even creating a simple photoshop edit so it's a full hard surface course and it includes everything you need to know to get started in addition we are using two free add-ons over there one of them is machine tools and the other one is power safe and there's also a bonus section that introduces you to a paid add-on workflow which is decal machine so you got everything there to get started and it's in one place and it's really really well organized so click on the link in the video description and get that course other than that we have a lot of videos on our youtube channels together with josh and you know you can just go there and watch them there's a ton of videos for beginners there's a ton of videos for people who use add-ons so you shouldn't have any problems with finding education and answers to your questions Tip number four, practice regularly. This is really important. The more you use Blender, the more consistent you are with the use of Blender, the more comfortable you will be with it. That's just, you know, nature of anything in life. Repetition and practice make perfect. So make a habit of using it regularly to improve your skills. This is really important. So it's not good enough to just learn Blender for 10 hours on Saturday, then do absolutely nothing for the entire week and start blending a bit on Sunday. This is not progression, okay? This is bullshit. So what you need to do, you need to assign a bit of time every day and do it consistently. Consistency and perseverance is essential to anything you do in life, anything. Even if you fail, you go through this, okay? You go through your failures. We all fail, guys, okay? I have failed models, I have failed ideas. I have a lot of models that didn't make a course or 
or a video uh, because I just didn't like them. I ended up not liking them. And it's, you know, I don't uh, get depressed or frustrated. It's just a way of learning. Way of learning is through failures, okay? So you're going to fail and fail and fail and then you're going to succeed. But if you give up before you succeed, you will not get to your destination. So practice regularly. This is really, really important. Let me give you a really good analogy with the boat. So when you're in the boat and you're rowing up a creek, then the current's gonna be pushing you back. So when you're rowing consistently, and you know you are rowing faster than the current is pushing you you'll be moving up the creek but the moment you stop rowing you're going to be pushed back to the place when you started so even if you put a lot of time and effort you're literally going to be back in the place when you began so the consistency is essential in everything you do tip number five join a community there are many communities, online communities of Blender users where you can ask questions, get feedback and share your work. And that is really important because one, you will be surrounded with people who are like minded. That's immersion. You need to be immersed in whatever you do. OK, so if you study sci fi, you want to play sci fi games, you want to look at sci fi art and you want to talk to people who just, you know, breathe and eat sci fi every day, because that will motivate you to just work more consistently and put more effort. OK, that's one. Two, you're going to have your questions answered which means you're gonna get less frustrated because you can progress quicker and also you will have this feeling that you know you're not alone in it which is kind of cool now we have a free discord community you can join uh, it's over 2000 well over 2000 people right now we also have a facebook group and our uh, links are in the video description and lastly at blender boss we have our paid community which is a private community of uh, very focused individuals so if you're interested in joining hop on our website and sign up now we open this community only twice a year so there's a way at least if you're interested sign up for the waitlist and you'll be good to go next time the door opens joining a community is essential doesn't matter what kind of community you join make sure actually that you know people in that community are the type of crowd that you want to be surrounded with always aspire to people who are better than you okay so if you see some intimidating level works in a community like someone is really good that's where you want to be because you know that when you're going to ask a question you're going to get the correct answer no one's going to be guessing but they're going to tell you something from the experience and that's really important tip number six experiment with different tools and features right so don't be afraid to try out different tools and features of Blender. This is a great way to learn what they do and how they can be used. And maybe you're going to find some tool that's going to be, you know, sort of like a eureka moment for your workflow. So let's say you're working on a specific project and you have a specific problem and you just don't know what kind of tool to use. Now, if you are experimenting with different tools or watching different videos that present different tools in Blender, you may actually know what to do. Do you see what I mean? So Blender has a ton of different tools and it can do a lot of things. You know, that's why it's called Blender, because you can do video editing, sculpting, texturing, 3D, 2D, whatever the hell. So it's just so much that you can do that, you know, Blender is just overwhelming as a tool, right? It's too much. So you never know what's inside of it. OK, there's just so many things you can do with it. So you need to kind of uh, experiment or just, you know, go on YouTube and search. But I guarantee you that if you need to do something, there's either a tool for it or an add on for it. So experiment with different tools and also do your research. Tip number seven, work on personal projects. In addition to following tutorials, try working on your own personal projects to apply what you've learned and get a feel for how Blender can be used. That is really important because what you want to do is you want to apply the knowledge from tutorials into your private work to start developing your style. We very often get a question from students. They asking if they can use the model they created after following a tutorial of ours um, on their portfolio. They follow a tutorial, they create a model, and then they want to use that model as a portfolio piece. Guys, don't do it, okay? Because, you know, art directors who hiring people in studios they're not stupid okay they know what's going on in the market they'll very quickly find out that you know this model has been used many times online so they'll find out where it came from and when they're going to find out this came from a course you're toast so what you want to do is you want to learn from a tutorial but then you want to create something on your own you need to break this fear that you can't do it you need to break this barrier of not being able to do it it's not that you're not being able to do it you just don't have no experience so you need to gain experience right the only way to gain experience is through actually doing 
company. So you need to break that barrier and start doing things on your own, right? So learn the tools, learn the workflow and start doing it. In order to create successful models on your own, you need to expand your visual library. That's really important. So go online, find some really cool art, put them in pure ref and, you know, gather libraries of this stuff. I have like thousands of thousands of images. And before you model something, just, you know, open the file and try to find inspiration. This is really important, okay? So try to, you know, create personal projects. That's really, really crucial. Tip number eight, take breaks. It's important to take breaks and give your mind a rest while learning a new program. Don't try to learn everything at once. Now, I must say that I didn't take any breaks when I was learning Blender. I was learning 14 to 17 hours a day, every day. And after nine months of starting learning Blender, we were already creating our first course with Josh. So for me, that progression was really quickly, but I've put a lot of effort into it. But look, not everyone is crazy, okay? You know, I'm insane, so don't follow me. But if you need to take a break, take a break, because there's nothing worse than a burnout, okay? If you're a person that's gonna burn out, it's better to take a break before you burn out because then you're gonna start detesting the program, okay? especially when you're getting frustrated, which is normal at the beginning. So if you don't really have a very strong character, you cannot push through all the failures, you will get burned out, you will get frustrated and you can actually give up. So remember, 90% of people give up in the first you know, few months because they just cannot do it because they think it's too difficult or it's just taking too much time or they have too many problems, they cannot do it. There's always come up with excuses, right? But maybe that's because they don't take breaks, you know. So if you're a person that needs a break sometimes, take it. You know, it's going to be good for you. Watch some, you know, video or play some games. I don't care. Do something else. Learn Photoshop, whatever. Just take a bit of a break. You know, you'll gain perspective and come back to Blender and uh, you'll be fine. Just don't make it too long of a break because if you take like a month, you'll forget what you've been doing. You know what I mean? So I mean, consistency again. So take a break, but you know, don't overdo it, yeah? Tip number nine, don't be afraid to make mistakes. That is really, really important. Look, it's natural to make mistakes while learning a new program. It's, you know, normal. Don't be discouraged by them. Use them as opportunity to learn and improve. When I make a mistake or I fail, I don't give up. I just found a way that doesn't work. So I need to find another one that works. Failing is just a step. It's a step up because you're stepping up towards your goal. So instead of thinking you're stepping down, think that you're stepping up. It's all about perspective. So when you think about uh, failures as actually a way up, to a higher level, then your mind's going to start thinking positively about them. It's kind of like a stepping stone. It's like building experience in life. Only because you have a bad experience in life doesn't mean that something good will not, you know, come out of it. Usually does, right? So at the moment of the failure, we think it's a disaster. But, you know, two years down the line, we think, well, shit, it's good that it happened because actually it helped me to do this, this and that. Because without this happening, I wouldn't be in my position right now. Do you see what I mean? So don't be afraid to make mistakes because people who don't make mistakes, they stay in a safe zone. And staying in a safe zone is stagnancy. You will not improve. So if you want to be the best or, you know, aim towards being the best to the 1%, 2% of the top people in the industry, then you will have to make a lot of mistakes because it's in inevitable, okay? It's going to happen. So get used to it, embrace it. It's a part of a process, all right? Nothing extraordinary. It's a part of a process. So only because you see these polished works and fantastic renders of people on their portfolios, it doesn't mean that they don't have shit renders on their drives, man. They probably have a lot of them. They just don't post them because they're going to post, you know, something that actually uh, they're proud of, right? But, um, you know, failures, they happen to everyone. And tip number 10, have fun. Learning Blender can be challenging at times, but it also can be very rewarding. Don't forget to have fun and enjoy the process of learning. You know, it's all about how you approach it. Approach it with a grain of salt, all right? Don't take it too seriously. I know it's, you know, even if you think it's your job or it's, it's about to become your job, you know, it cannot be a chore. Because if it feels like a chore, maybe you're doing the wrong thing. Maybe you're in the wrong industry, okay? It needs to be fun. So if it doesn't feel fun for you, then maybe your approach or attitude is incorrect or maybe it's just not for you, right? So make sure it's fun. Even when you fail, okay, and you get frustrated, remember your goal, okay? You remember your goal. You have a vision, right, of a fantastic render on your portfolio and people say, wow, that's really cool. That's your goal. So bypass all the frustrations, you know, think about them as a step up and this will actually ensure that you think that learning Blender is fun. So, you know, have fun. 
Anyway guys, that's it. Hope this video helps you out. And like I said, remember about the free course. Link in the video description. It's fantastic and it will definitely help you to get on your path to success. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.